Welcome to Schmuckcast. I am George Weatherford. And I am and Lucas Sherman. How's it going, man? I'm all right. Number 18 in the books. Yep. Let's get things rolling nice and quick. What we got? Movies and games or movie? <laughs> movies and... Shut up! Movies and games or movies and games? <laughs> what are we going to talk about? Like, um, a, B, or C. What's going on, movies man? And games. You want to talk Spade. about your little odyssey so far that you got going on with the uh, Puppet Master? You're doing your... That's stuff, you know. Give the people a little hindsight into what you're doing, huh? You're doing reviews for... Um, well, every year I do 31 yeah. Days of Slashers, which is in, in October, leading up to Halloween, my favorite holiday. Yeah. I do a post, I post a movie review for uh, a horror movie, and generally it's a big franchise. Um, but I've been running out of franchises lately, so this year we're doing a direct video a thon And uh, the... <laughs> the <laughs> And anyway, sorry, no, sorry. The, the, the first the first series that I'm that I'm reviewing for October, I do these usually earlier in the year because it's 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 31 reviews, so it takes a while um, to do these little reviews. But um, I'm doing the Puppet Master series, and uh, some yeah, bottom of the barrel. That's not on. that bad, is it? Uh, was it Blade? You have Blade, the Blade, thing Tunneler, Blade. You had Tunneler, who you always k- called Drill Sergeant, but it's no, tu- it's Tunneler. It's Tunneler. Yeah, and then there's the big one with big hands and a Pinhead. small dick. I mean, a small head. Pin- I thought he had a small dick too, but uh, that's just a dream check. you had. I, you know, there, no, there's some, there's moments you can. Then pause. there's um, there's uh, he's in every movie. Uh, name, Jester. Though? Oh yeah, Jester oh, with Pinhead. the head. Pinhead is the guy you're talking. Okay, about. with big hands and he can yeah. strangle. Which is the name of the guy in Hellraiser, also, right? Pinhead. Yeah. So yeah. My favorite was always um the Tunneler, probably. Oh, well, actually, no, Blade, because Blade was the leader, wasn't he? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. He, yeah. he just had the coolest look and um, pretty. You lethal. know, in, in hindsight, I mean, you have to be a fan of these movies really to appreciate them. And I know we 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 usually talk about the first one being really boring, but reviewing yeah, the movies, yeah. reviewing the movies, you can actually analyze them, and uh, there's more to them than well, of course there than, always is. You know, know, when you're just I think watching I, I, think I enjoyed the second one better just because it was more um, amusing to me. The second one is pretty lame too. I think no, it is lame. The but only like, the only good part to me was Torch. Like you know, one one wasn't well, there wasn't too many parts where it was so bad it was funny, and one one was just very dry. Whereas at least in part two, it's so cheaply done though. Like I was laughing yeah. my ass off at a lot of the parts, you know. And the story was kind of cool. Don't they try to reanimate their their maker, or some shit like that, right? And he yeah. Shows up, well, like, the, in all the story of Puppet Master Two is that um, story. Yeah, uh, the puppets can only live for fifty years, and after that, right. they need their formula, and they need Toulon to make the formula. That's why they resurrect him in two. And then in two, he wants to resurrect his wife, Ilsa, who was shot by the Nazis. And uh, the puppets get all pissed off at him because they realize that he was just using them as tools to do this. Yeah, so they turn on him at the end. Don't yeah. they get brains? Yeah, brains for him. Creepy yeah. ending, too. But I, I, my fair part, I think... You felt these fine? You brought me animal brains! Was it in part two when Tunneler drills that hole right through that guy's forehead? Yeah. That was badass. I like and the then three, he that. drills a hole through the Nazi in the car. That I didn't like the off... Wasn't there, like, off-camera kills and shit? Like... The, the first one had a lot of off-camera yeah. kills. No, the Ugh. second one showed a lot more, though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you watch them, even though they were direct video, the Don't puppet effects are really good. Oh, yeah, the puppets always look pretty cool. I give it that, but the characters. Hey. Well, it's not about characters. You I go to a movie not, like... But this is, you know, the Puppet Master movies... You didn't I, even get to see the puppets that much, did you, in the first one, I don't think? No, not really. The, in the first them, one, they took back seat to the story. Was it like a bunch of psychics going to a mansion? Yep. Trying and to the second one the, was a bunch of Ghostbusters going to the mansion. One of them was gay, and, like, the puppets weren't happy about it. <laughs> yeah. They just started killing people. What was their motive to kill people? Well, that's one? I made a note of that. One of yeah. my comments is that, yeah, you don't know why they kill so, people. They're so what are you doing there. with these things? Are you really just going showing clips of the movies and just going through your thoughts of it? Yeah, they're just movie reviews. Give it history or... Oh, okay. Movie well, reviews? the first... Because what's, what's interesting about direct-to-video movies, <laughs> especially back in the 80s, was that there was a thirst for direct-to-video movies because people who didn't go to the theaters a lot resorted to direct-to-video movies. They'd go to the video store and just pick out stuff that wasn't big. I mean, it might have been cheap, but it was an alternative to the you know summer blockbuster. You know what I mean? I know what series. You should do the Jaws series. You really should, because that way you get to watch three and four. Uh, you really want to watch some bad movies. Watch three and four. That would be cool. That's four movies in your canon. Yeah. Maybe you know what? Actually, skip the first one and just do like three and four. <laughs> it would be just, hard. Like, don't even do a good movie. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to do a movie that's got as high of a profile as Jaws because there's just been so much said about it. There's nothing, oh. and I'm not even. See, I like Jaws. I think it's a good movie, but I'm not as big of a fan as 
the, the oh, we watched Jaws it recently. Fans, yeah, you know? Well, no, I know, but you seem to enjoy it. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, I did enjoy it, but yeah. I'm me reviewing it is not going to do the movie. It was cool to watch that movie with you and watch you kind of cringe a little and go, ooh, ooh no. <laughs> oh, it's a very well done <laughs> you know, film. Yeah, the craft very, of it I mean, is... That goes beyond a slash. That's a movie I think even filmmakers can really appreciate. It's just yeah. like, wow, the craft of that film. And, you know, yeah. we don't even talk about it, but it's just cool. Some of the scenes, you were like, oh, shit. You know, it was just like, like I said. When well, you I think one of my it, one of, one of the standout thing. scenes for me is just when you see the shark going underwater eating that. Yeah, you were like, oh, that's so bad. And he sees broken leg. But my favorite scene, I think, and even Spielberg pointed out, too, is always Quint's little speech about all yeah. the guys that go in the water. Well, it's one of those movies that I can't, you know? I can't pinpoint a favorite scene. It's every scene. Well, I like very... that scene a lot, though, because they're laughing, you know, and they, Marianne Moffat, she broke my head out. They're joking and stuff. Having right. fun. Then he goes into that speech. It's just such a contrast of mood, you know. You right. don't even see it coming. And oh, yeah. It was just, yeah. A great, and it's great got a very film. good Spielberg movies, but, especially um, in the earlier, in the, in the like, the 80s. He was really good at these character arcs. Yeah. You You're know? right, though. You made a good point in the other podcast. You are like, man, if that shark had been working, you know, maybe the movie wouldn't have been as good. You're right. You know, Spielberg was saying how he, he Yeah, had, I mean. He had his storyboard where you would see parts of the shark. Not the whole thing, per se, but, like, you'd yeah. see the fin, you'd see Spielberg the had, I think you Spielberg know. had a lucky break with that film. No, but it takes a true filmmaker, though, to work around shit like that, though. You really got to think about, a, a, like, a director to really think, how can I scare the people without even showing the shark? That's right. a challenge. It's not like getting lucky. It's more about being able to to, to do it. Most well, directors that's, that's would piss, piss their pants. You're yeah. gonna make a monster movie, but your monster isn't working. I mean, most directors would give up. They would be like, "But he, you know, he really tried to make a movie where yeah. it was all about more about suspense and." Mood. Well, you know, um, the Empire Strikes Back. That uh, the scene with the Wampa ice creature. I mean, yeah. now in the special edition, you see more of the creature, but before you barely saw the creature. You cut away from the creature. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of that was inspired by by Jaws. You're you're freaked out by it's more what you by don't what see. you don't see. Right, or like when the little boy dies and you see that big geyser of blood. Remember that right. too? The blood just shoots yeah. up and that awesome vertigo shot. And obviously the characters i love all the characters and the, the screenplay actually there's is, a movie the did you ever is amazing for jaws I think. Uh, what's the writing, movie that but... francis coppola directed i think it was called the outsiders Godfather? no the outsiders you ever see that no nah, ralph macchio i gotta see some more of his movies. based on a book he directed the the movie i believe but there's a shot where it's it's about it's about uh greasers you know what they are like the the gang they're like not gang members but like in the 80s 70s yeah. they were called greasers they were the guys who wore the leather jackets in high school right right yeah and, you know Switch and they blades. they were like they, they, this was a gang Ralph Macchio's in it and um they get in a scuffle with a rival gang and they actually end up killing some you know someone in the gang to for self defense and they don't show the kill on screen they show it happens like over a pool mm-hmm. and when they kill the guy they show like a pile of a, wow, a bunch yeah. of blood in the pool of the water it's a really cool thing. Well, to, you know, the last to thing too about Jaws too is there's all kinds of like you know he goes through the books and you see j- shark bites and it just gives you your ima- you imagine what the shark could look like. You know what I mean? It, your imagination gets away with. Yeah, you. I also liked when uh, Richard Dreyfuss was opening up the shark and he's just pulling shit out of the he shark. Didn't need a but, car, did he? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's got, it does have a great, great script. I think a lot of people pass yeah. it up sometimes. You know, I, and I was I reading about it, too. I liked yeah. how they decided to do, like, two-thirds, because it's based on a book. They decided to right. scrap two-thirds of the book and, and develop their own characters. And it is kind of like two movies. The first half kind of plays like a right. horror movie, whereas the second part is more like an adventure at sea. You yeah, know, I always kind of like that too. It's but the whole movie too. is very all gonna die. Yeah. But <laughs> it's that's, a masterpiece. That's it really thing. is. We can talk it's about it good. on here and have fun. But it's sure. me reviewing it is. I like to do no, movies yeah. for the most. Oh, no, for and sure. I've done this. This is my fifth year doing it. Last year, I took a little bit of a break and I did a couple of podcasts and I reviewed Paranormal Activity because those yeah. movies scared the shit out of me for real. But um, the first couple of years, I did like high profile movies like Friday the Thirteenth, of course, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, right. Um, but now I, I, I kind of take pleasure, even if they're bad movies, they don't really have a great reputation. It's funny. The last one I just saw the legacy because it's a bunch of like clips from the other films at the very end, there's an acknowledgement. It's like, we'd like to thank all the crew and cast who made this film series so, so successful that weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, dickheads. Yeah, anyway, some no, of them, cool some of them are hard again. to watch. Like you get to Puppet Master Four, yeah, where they're I having laser so. fights, and the main villain's a demon that looks like Lord Zed from Power Rangers. Why don't we I have mean, a bad movie ridiculous. night? We need to have a bad movie night. We'll yeah, watch, well, I mean, let's do it. Line it up. We, sh- we should. I, I enjoy two and that. Yeah. <laughs> Direct, direct to DVD. Yeah, we should watch that. I actually heard that's pretty funny, actually. Kind of a cult classic. Uh, anyways, uh, you've done 60 reviews already, right? You've done it two times now, right? The 30 movies? No, I, I told you this is my like fifth year doing it. Jesus. Yeah. You are kind of ripping off AV- AVGN, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make it sure. Well, it's not AVGN. It's James Hi, James Rolfe. If you're listening, hello. It's James Rolfe. Yeah. No, I, I, I've, we love I think you. I've mentioned before somewhere that, uh, yeah, he started it. <laughs> He James Somewhere. Roll started it. He did uh, 
He he does every every Somewhere. year actually he does. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, he does. Monster Madness. He really knows his horror movies. Man. Yeah, he, he does. Really is into and horror. I, see, like I I love the genre, but the only movies that fascinate me are the slasher ones. And slasher is only oh, a sub genre. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, he he does like everything from he did a whole Godzilla thon, right? And then he did a couple of sequel thons, but he does like the old like Universal monster movies, the Hammer monster movies, you know. It's it, oh, another really great movie too. we saw. I'd like to talk about it real quick too. Is your, your one of your favorite directors did it? American Graffiti. I really really enjoyed it, starring Richard Dreyfuss. And right. uh, do you remember anything about it? I mean, I really really enjoyed that movie. Well, I thought it was it. really fun. I've seen it three or four times. Not really now. funny. Harrison Ford had a great memorable part. You know, I love when he's talking shit. This is all kids driving around in their cars, and one kid gets a really nice car from his friend, right, and ends up getting it taken, what, what, stolen, or yeah, it yeah. gets it gets um like. Not yeah, like taken to a toad yard or something. Mm-hmm. It disappears and he finds it like down the road. What would you like? I liked it a lot. Yeah. Richard Driver. It's a hard. It. It's a hard movie for me to relate to because it is a period piece and it does deal with that whole scene of cruising. I mean, I mean, but look, you, what, that's what we were doing. You know, you, yeah, you and exactly. me were cruising. But here's the thing, like. Still, our, when I when neon. I when I was hanging out with you guys, <laughs> right. I was neon. I was like the twenty year old hanging out sure. with the high school kids. Well, I was on, we were all, yeah. in high school. I didn't have that. You felt like Jason so. Biggs in American Pie, you know, like part two. <laughs> They're like hanging out at frat parties. You're like, Are we? right? Yeah, pretty much. No, so you had fun. You had fun. I didn't do that as a kid. You know, I was a very in, indoor kid, and I didn't have a lot of friends. So American Graffiti, when I first saw it, and even now, I, I can't relate too much. But to I, it. I've always really enjoyed movies that kind of have different storylines going on, and that that's what I did like about it. it. I did it, like it keeps it fresh. You know, sometimes yeah. one storyline is just not enough for two hours. I love the look of George well, Lucas's films. He's got a yeah, very well, natural documentary. He really look, captured that's where that he time came from. perfectly. Yeah. And, I think not only did that we liked it, but I would definitely think people older that were in that time really, really like it. You know, oh yeah, it's got you know great screenplay. And I don't know, if, I don't know of a lot of it. movies in the seventies during that time period that yeah. did a lot of movies in the fifties. Yeah, That's more something you see nowadays. Some people regard it as a landmark. They they think this this is one of those films that really captured a time. That's like one of the best movies ever made. Well, maybe yeah. not that, but yeah, some people. would I mean, tell the you tagline that. for the movie is "Where were you in fifty two? You know, it's. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, think it's, my it, parents weren't even born when that movie. I know, took place, right? You know? That makes you, yeah. So, but you know, it had a young Harrison back Ford, to the future shit. Dreyfus, and um, you had yeah, a couple that cast. was breaking up. Great right? cast, or no, no, they wanted to see other people. That's so fucking. Yeah, cool. I appreciate it more now than I did when I first sure. saw it because it does have a very realistic documentary feel that makes it well feel more realistic. When a movie's a true classic, that's how it works. You know what I mean? A classic is something you could see so many times, and like you still get more out of it. You know. That's in some movies you, you love them the first time, but as you watch them more, they fade away, and you're just like, eh. The classics yeah. are definitely the ones that just you can keep going back to and enjoying. So what else? I, th- I thought we were going to talk about like our top ten video games that mean top you, ten video games that mean you uh, grew up with. Want to go with that? Really? You're more gamer than I am. Maybe I don't know. Well, you've been playing a lot I'm of retro games my... lately. I'm trying to, you know, yeah. Super Metroid, Final well, Fantasy. Most of them VI. are Super Nintendo. Yeah, most of them are Super Nintendo. Obviously, Nintendo has a lot of good games too. The NES could very well be the best system ever made. I mean, just for what it did for video games in general. I mean, yeah. that was just such a jump, you know. And it was so simple, two buttons. It was yep, like, I more remember my library. Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis uh, days. Yeah. But, yeah, I had a lot of good times I loved with your my list. Nintendo. Your list was very solid, although I do still say Donkey Kong Country 2 is more enjoyable than Donkey Kong Country 1, but I understand. I, I digress. <laughs> is that the name? I digress. It is better. I think you can admit I, it is better. Well, it's the, uh, you more know, challenging. It's, it looks even looks better. It's, it's the same better. thing as it's the same thing as Mario Kart though. On my yeah. list, Mario Super Mario Kart was on there because it defined a genre. But I I, I said in there that Mario Kart sixty four is the better game. Yeah. Uh, Donkey Kong Country just set a standard, and Donkey Kong it Co- did set a standard. But you're talking about your favorite video games, not what set a standard. You're talking about what you well, enjoy. Donkey the most. Kong Country is I. Don't know. I, I Kind of like I even find Dixie two. to be much better in Donkey Kong. I hate to say it because Donkey Kong didn't exactly do anything good. What well, did he that's, do? that's your ground? opinion. He, what did he do? He it's like it's my opinion that you're that's wrong. What he did. But, you know. I know, but Dixie at least allowed. You know, and uh, I will say this, and I'm sure you can admit the animals are definitely better in part two as well. Part one had some stupid animals, at least they got rid of the ostrich. Well, that you know, wouldn't Donkey die. Kong Country 2, I'll give you this. Donkey Kong Country 2, I'll concede that it is better all, overall. I mean, I did enjoy 2, but it didn't leave an impression on me. Why isn't it on your list then? The same, because Donkey it didn't Country leave an impression on me as much of an impression as the first one does. And that's what that list was all about. What left the biggest impression? Oh, well, that's different. You're saying your favorite video games, but... Why is that different? Impression. It's not different. Because impression is just your first time playing it. doesn't exactly... Not necessarily. No, it's, no, it's, not, it's not your first time playing it. That's impression true. is, it left me with a mark that Donkey Kong Country 2 didn't. 
Like, I, I remember yeah. more of, of the first game. It just left much more of an impression on me than the second one did. And it's nothing to do with your first time playing it. I've played both games many times. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, just like Super Mario Kart. I like the way that Mario Kart 64 feels. I love the look right, of that game. Yeah. But Mario's Super Mario Kart left more of an impression. I remember Glenn was getting his dick chopped off during his bris. And this was 93. He was just born. He was... <laughs> He was getting what? his bris. This was 93. Yeah, he I was, like he was getting his bris. I remember, because yeah. when Glenn was born, my dad went out, took me and Jack to Best Buy, and got us a couple of video games to celebrate Glenn being born. So we got Mario All-Stars and Mario Kart. We yeah. got them both, because huh. my dad was like, pick one. Pick. And we were like, we couldn't. So we both got that the, one of each game. And uh, when he had his bris, I had the Boy Scouts over, because I was in the Boy Scouts. I had a couple of the guys come over, and we were in there watching Toxic Avenger and playing Super Mario Kart yeah. while Glenn was crying his ass off in the other room. And it's just such a vivid memory to me. Yeah. And we also we love playing Battle Mode. Yeah, Mario Battle Super Mario Mode Mario on Super Mario Kart is a lot of fun. Yeah. Lots so of fun. So that left more an impression on me. But, yeah, Mario Kart Lots 64, I think, technically is a better game. But, well, of course, yeah. yeah you know, well, you have to... You, you, think of the, kinda... you think of all the advancements, too. I mean, obviously, a, a, you know, a game on the 64, it's going to look better. For, for it's Super Nintendo, sound better. For, see, when you, you played, when you played, there's a lot of bad games on Nintendo because even though Nintendo did a lot, they were still figuring out how to do sure, a lot yeah. of things. Okay? But what a library, though. Yeah. It's amazing. When Super games. Nintendo came out, they were making a lot of A-plus games. Yeah. And, and like, Mar Super Mario Kart was the first of its kind. And look how good that game is. It's still playable. You don't play the game now and be like, oh, this is this hasn't it aged is. well at all. It's it's aged very well. And you're right. It, well, also, like I said, it, just, it launched Mario into the whole stratosphere. I mean, Mario was just, a two, you know, saving the princess. But that game yeah. solidified his there's status. Like, there's more you can do with all his character. All of a sudden, everything came out. Mario could do anything after Mario Kart. And, and just, after that you know, game came out, I mean, even the traditional platformer yeah. Mario games changed quite a bit. I mean, Mario 64 like, changed the whole... It's your favorite system, right? Isn't it Super Nintendo, you would think? I mean, you got like four of your games are from that system. You would imagine then that's your favorite system. Yeah, it's it's so hard Pretty to say. Much. Like, I'm inclined to say Super Super Nintendo, but I had a lot of good you know times. I mean? You know what I'm thinking of? Your top ten, I think half of them were Super Nintendo Yeah, games. well, but I had a lot of good times on my NES... Right. I had a lot of good times on my Sega Genesis and my PlayStation. Right. No, I, well, they're all good, obviously. Yeah, it's they're hard to pick good. one. I mean, I, 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 really think, great, yeah. I really think the PlayStation, the first PlayStation, was the last of the, like, the great video game consoles. Oh, and PS2, the, man. PS2 was no, good. No, no. I think no, the PlayStation 2 was awesome. Because PS2 was when, uh, when um, I just thought that's when games started... That was when yeah. games started to go online. For the first time, you're really starting to see console games go online, and the graphics were becoming more realistic. Games were yeah. games were more story driven at that point. And I no, there's not very many. Come on, how many memorable ga memorable games can you say were on PS2? Right. Well, I think yeah, I'm sure a lot of well, Grand Theft Auto dominated that console. And yeah, but you still haven't played any of those, have you? I started playing three. Grand Theft Auto yeah. three has not aged very well at all. That's sad. Yeah, Consider no, it. but that game still has the wow factor. That game was the first one, though. No, it doesn't. No, it's that. that <laughs> no, I mean, no, it now doesn't. you play it, sure, but you know. No, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like Grand Theft Auto three, a game that came out ten years after Mario oh. Kart, to me, is not playable. You gotta remember I tried when that it. game came out, though. That was really the first one, though. That was. Like, I understand. Wow, I can get in this car. Can I do this? Oh, I can do that. Yeah. That was that first free roaming. Because you didn't play it, right? You'd never played it when it came right. out. Right, but when at the we, same time, you, know, if you, had. you can't really associate... Back then you could, but today yeah. you can't really associate Grand Theft Auto with PS2 because it came out on multiple platforms. Well, I know, I'm just saying. You know, San Andreas, you had Vice City, you had... Yeah, you know, well, I, I, I understand that, PS2. but I don't know. They, no, I'm just they saying, don't when, leave. when GTA 3 came out, that was a huge deal. I mean... You're, you're right. That was huge because that was the first one where it was like, wow, but I can is, do whatever I want. That's why I, I said I'd like to talk yeah. about your favorite games. Yeah. You know, maybe we have some in common. Oh, I'm sure we do. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. But, the, but the game, the, the, um, when I did my top 25 movies list, yeah. that's not a definitive list, and that's not really you're gonna any change particular it, you? order. Yeah, you're going to change it. It's going it's to change all the time well, because the of what I'm in the mood let's for. In the, well, it's but not the, the mood, my yeah. top 10 video game list, that's yeah. a definitive list to me. Yeah. I cannot think of another 10 games. That I would put on that list. It's a good list. I liked your list. Yeah, I did. I agree. It's with a that. pretty well, you know, damn yeah, good list. I, I, you know, I was reading a review today. Yeah. Um, I don't remember where I was reading on the article, and they mentioned Twisted Metal Two, and they were saying how uh, yeah, that's a great game. Twisted. Oh, uh, ten franchises that were ruined by ins by certain installments. Huh? Twisted, oh, Twisted Metal. <laughs> Twisted Metal Three was on there. Oh, and God. they were like, Twisted Metal Two hasn't aged very God. well today. But no, they were saying. TM2 hasn't aged very well today, but back I'm like, yeah, it's aged great. The game is still perfectly playable. We had a blast playing that well, game. Well, it's playable, but it 
Age, I think, has something to do with the graphics. Age has the, the presentation. I don't think the graphics look that bad, I don't, though. I don't think when they say it's aged, I don't think they're saying the controls have gotten worse. They said saying, that, it, no, they they basically said that doesn't it doesn't hold like, up very well It today. doesn't look that good anymore, yeah. And it, it doesn't, but it, I think it does, but, like, to, to I think it looks standards, great. of course, it doesn't Well, look no, that great. I mean, looks, but that's that's the yeah. charm of it, though. Yeah, no, I agree. Games today have no charm. Well, the charm is definitely in the gameplay. It's just so much fun to play, you know, and all the cars yeah. and the different, you know, we've been over it before. But I love playing a game yeah. and... And, and looking at even if it's if it's like all polygonal graphics like those PlayStation games were, yeah, I just love looking at that. And being like, this is still a video game. You can't really do that today because yeah, the graphics the great look too realistic. Screen. Oh, it's all it's all pure gameplay. It's all it is. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. If you gave me the exact same game, didn't change any gameplay mechanics, but just gave me today's graphics, that'd be great. Yeah. But when that'd people be the say perfect game. people say it hasn't aged well or this and that, they're usually talking about the look of it, like how all oh, the graphics. Oh yeah, but God. you should know as well but as people anybody. People like that, it's like you're stupid then because you're not enjoying. Yeah, the game. you shouldn't. You, you don't. Shouldn't, you know, yeah, you shouldn't look at a game for its. It's graphics. all about the gameplay, my friend. That's what makes a game fun. You know, it's not about well, a cutscene that lasts for two hours of. You know, two. And that's exactly and why I have a problem here. with with today's yeah. game. Well, except it's for just, GTA Five, but yeah. Yeah, because well, those cutscenes were actually cool. <laughs> they were, but those th- that was an example of a game that blended am I, am great bad gameplay. Guy? Am I a bad guy for letting my eight year old play? I don't know. I still feel kind of bad about that. <laughs> well, you turned the Can volume about down. That? I, well, you compromised. Points. Go ahead. Some talk points about I did. It. No, I feel bad. I, no, I feel bad. He had a great time watching me go run, run, run from the when cops. I used to work Can at... I kill someone? <laughs> but he's like eight years old. I'm sitting there going, "What when the I fuck?" Used to, when I used to work at Toys R Us and Grand Theft Auto Three was big, and all the San Andreas and all those games were coming out, I used to get. Old ladies would come in all the time with their eight-year-old sons or grandsons, that, yeah. and they had, they would. Um, hey, it was funny. With this one time, this kid came in. He was like seven years old or eight years old. Came in, wanted to buy it. We could not sell it to him. You had to be eighteen or older for any R-rated right, movies or anything. Yeah. I don't know if that's the policy everywhere, but Toys R Us it was. And uh, I told him I cannot sell this to you. He had the money. His grandma was waiting out in the car. She came in really pissed off. She was like, "Why didn't you sell this to my son?" I'm like, "Ma'am." I can't. It's got nudity. It's got violence. It's got swearing. You go around and kill hookers in the game. I can't right. sell that to him. And she looks at him. She's like, you serious? She's like, you're going to make me buy this game for you? Uh-uh. And she took him out to the car. He was pissed. And the kid looked at me. He's like, why would you tell her that? <laughs> it was funny. But no, like, I, I explained this to a parent one time. I'm like, the parents have problems. They have more problem with sex than they do with the violence. It's okay to blow that guy's head off, but it's not okay to go have sex with the hooker. Like, I, to think about that. That's weird. That's all. That's, oh, that's really what I weird. mean, though. Was I bet? Was I wrong to do it? I don't know. I had it on you, but like at the same time, it felt so. Most great. people. See, this kid's a gamer, and I don't think he's ever even seen GTA V before, and yeah. it just blew his mind. How old your your nephew? He's eight. He's only eight. He's just a young young. Most kid. parents would tell you that that's like. Most parents would tell you that's wrong. Um, I think on mute it's okay because obviously the language I don't want him hearing. You but know, that's well, that, that's the thing though. I turned up the volume for two seconds and Trevor hit like a curve and he's like, "Well, I'll be fucked." <laughs> and my mom was like, "What he's?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, mute, mute." mute. <laughs> Like, but was he? Like but, were you, but were you letting him go around and kill people? Yeah. Well, he was watching me mostly. And I, we went but I'm just saying, like, but why? Loved why having, is the swearing yeah. so bad that you had to mute it? I but don't want to have him hear cunt and all that stuff. Right. But it's okay for him to go around and blow people right. away. Well, I was, this is part of the game. You know? That's why you know you pick up the control, you start playing, and he goes, "Well, can I kill people?" And he's like, "Oh, get the gun. you know what?" He actually. I'm not called. saying you're wrong. I'm just saying why? Why was it okay to let him be exposed to the violence? And not right. the the language. Why is one worse than the other? If anything, I would think language is. I yeah, don't know. well, I don't know. I don't know. It just seemed like the right thing to do was to mute it. That's what my sister told me to do too. Just mute it, and it'll be fine. Because you know there was tons of bad language, and it's like right. a visual thing. Okay, whatever. But when you're hearing bad language, you know, it's a whole different thing. Watching just a video game, he knows it's a video game. Blah, 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 but when you're just saying cunt, fucking cunt bitch, you know, that's a whole different, you know. I mean, granted, beauty, yeah, kids can pick up the language. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. But, I mean, at the it same time. Compromise, like, I think, is what you call that. You know, yeah. you know, if I mute it, then it's okay. And he had a blast, though. But he essentially, kept, what run, you're, run, but what run you're saying, though, is like it's okay to see, it's okay to play a game where you can actually kill people, but the swearing has got to go. Well, I'm not saying that. I just, I had a moral conflict. I didn't know what to do. and Not let him play the game. It was game. like, <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't have, but he had a good time. And, you know, I that's that's the important thing. I feel like it was, I feel like, you know what, I'm an uncle, and it's like that's my nephew. I love him to death, and I'm here to help him grow up. And it's like you know what? I mean, no, I think I it's really know. cool it's like, that you bonded with him. And I think so. I, I, I mean, don't know, like he you, loved you know it. me. Like when I was growing up, Look at the graphics. Yeah, my dad didn't censor me. Yeah. I was able to play any game I really wanted to. Really, he knows, he's a smart kid. He knows it's a game, and it's like you know, it's just. It was kind of weird to have. We all would kill the cops. 
I got up on like a big billboard and just started sniping cops, and he's all like, "Oh, go! You're the master!" He get in trouble, and he grabbed me to the control. You're the master, go! And I was showing all the different camera angles, and he was cracking his ass off. I was showing all the different, like you know, like. <laughs> it was a very fun experience. I, I I really don't regret it at all, you know. And no, you shouldn't regret it. I'm just I'm kind of wondering. I, mean, I kind of do. I just was wondering your opinion. I just I, it, first I would never see myself doing that though. I never could have seen myself. Oh, well, you probably nephew. made. Let's play I mean, GTA if you're gonna, Five. If you're gonna let you know, him play that game, right. maybe that was the best decision because I mean you can always tell him like you know this is a game right but like Allie she picks up anything she hears you that's know? what I mean yeah the other day we were watching the angry yeah. video game nerd you watch that? and she was I wasn't watching it with her I was right. watching it in passing while doing yeah, laundry or something you. and she stumbled in started watching him because it was the episode where he was beating up Bugs Bunny yeah so of course she's gonna want to watch that but then she comes to me and she's like daddy I don't like this game he said this movie he says fucking shit all the time well, I guess muting was the right thing to do. I think that's the right compromise. I think that's that that, that line. And no, I'm not saying, oh, it's okay to play. No, I'm just saying, like, I think that was a good And you compromise. only played it for the one day, right? It's not like you yeah, played well, it all I'm the sure time. Yeah, I'm sure play it again. But it's like, yeah, this, I don't know, just, like, cut the language out. I, uh, I don't think it's so bad. I don't think, no. I mean, but at the same time, You're just I, driving around. You know what I mean? I just gave yeah. him choice to just play it. And he had fun just driving around. Like, you can't right. believe it. But then it was like, can I do this? And I'm not saying, I'm not, you shouldn't yeah. feel bad about it. I mean, you know, as long as you, you got to be there and explain. I was sitting there going, I have an eight-year-old nephew. Why are we playing GTA 5? I'm like, here we go. Let's play. Yeah, that's, but the more I thought about it, I said, well, I think as long as you can't hear all the bad words, I don't think it's that bad of a thing. Yeah. Really. I really do. I think well, as long as you're there to explain to him that, hey, this is a game. This is not real life. Right. This is not okay. That this is just fantasy. And he's a gamer, though. And I, it just, I can tell it was kicking his ass. Well, eventually he's going to play like those games anyway. Well, he plays Call of Duty all the time. At least that's what he But told I think him. there are a lot of kids that are not supervised. He, that uh, yeah. well, you know, he, you know, that play those games that shouldn't be. He plays Call of Duty. Well, he tells me he's like, I play Call of Duty all the time with my dad. So I'm like, well, okay. My mom's like, well, he might just be telling you that. <laughs> and he gave me a weird look, like uh, maybe <laughs> sneaky little fucker. <laughs> Anyways, no, that's a kind of a cool topic. I yeah, just, I've well, never seen myself. It's like I said. I mean, GTA most 5. most parents would tell you you're wrong and you shouldn't let them play it at that yeah, young of an age. But I'm here to say, like, I'm your friend and. My Maybe dad let me, you know, it was funny. It was a weird conflict with my parents. My mom didn't want me to see that yeah. shit. My dad was like, let him see it because eventually he'll see it anyway. Well, that's Friday the 13th. I don't know. Well, I guess GT5 is some days even worse. But, you know, because I mean, that's live visuals of naked let's women. Let's not and... talk about the extent of the violence, whether right. one's worse than the other. They right. both have graphic violence, nudity, and swearing, okay? They're both about you rooting for somebody that murders people. That's right. what GTA 5 oh, is. Oh, video game. And, You're rooting. Yeah. So what? You're rooting for the bad guys in both cases. Right. You know, they're both things you shouldn't let. I think Trevor was play. a good guy. They were shitheads. Deep down, he was. He they was, were all shitheads. He oh, they did on. terrible, terrible things. They did terrible come things, dude. They're criminals. They're shitheads. They're Michael, all the he earth. did was tear down that guy's patio. He had to. He had to come they up. did crimes, dude. <laughs> they, they were criminals. You're not I supposed know. to root for don't those guys. Don't tell me you didn't love playing it, though. <laughs> oh, shit, you know dude. That's mean? one of my favorite games. You don't think, oh, this is a crime. I You're love thinking, that this game. is fun. <laughs> you yeah. Because you know what? I think we all have a dark side, and we all like to live out vicariously. Exactly. Even through video games. Exactly. And, and that's what really was cool about that game, yeah, is you felt sure. like you were living that all lifestyle. Them, you got to go back to the PS2 games. Those games were really cool. Uh, probably San Andreas more know. than anything. I played I mean, GTA no, 3 for a few back, minutes. You know, it's all about the story, though. The stories are still very uh, Yeah, good. I don't know. I played GTA 3 for yeah. not very long, and I was like, fuck this. Give me my GTA 5. Uh, well, yeah, there's no... Yeah, obviously. But, I just, know, it's it's so hard games. to go back. It's really hard to go back to those games. In their time, they were great 5. games. And that's why I'm GTA, sure they are. That's why GTA 5 was probably the, like, the most highly anticipated game of all time, just because yeah. of the preceding titles. Oh, I mean, I, They had made such a name for themselves. Right. You missed out on those, didn't you? You've never yeah. really played any of those games. That's just well, kind of weird. you know what's weird, weird is though. I played GTA before yeah. GTA even existed. Yeah, because right? pe- people recommend you know, people think that GTA Three was the first game, forgetting it that feels it has like a three it. in yeah, the title. It does feel like yeah, it. but no, there were a couple of games before then, yeah. and I played those on the PC. So I, when GTA Three came out, I knew what it was, and I knew the concept would be really sweet. But no, I just because you know what it was was no one ever tried to beat the games. There didn't seem to be a goal. It just seemed like everybody wanted to do stuff outside Who's of the Who's everybody? Missions. Glenn? Glenn. A- anybody I knew who played the game. <laughs> Glenn, yeah. yeah. Well, well Glenn, is, yeah. Glenn primarily, Jack would play him, though. And, like, but it's I the same to... thing. You go to the letters. The letters on the map signify missions that well, yeah. continue the story. But I never and... knew anybody who wanted yeah. to beat the game. People were always like going around and like blowing up cops and prostitutes oh, and, and that's always finding all too. the secret stuff. But, but those I never games saw always were in company with a great story. You know, They always had great stories. Well, that was the thing. I, you know, I didn't know Especially in GTA V. I mean, yeah, the story. Well, yeah. And the missions Five is the fun. exception. Yeah, I just love the modern take. But let's—I want to do a movie review. Are we done? Are you ready for a movie review? What are we reviewing? We talked about. Let's talk about it. I'll give it a—I don't know. Let's go with uh, Gremlins. 
What do you really? think? Nineteen eighty four, yeah. Let's do Gremlins real quick. What do you think? Right. What's the story? He gets a Mogwai from his uncle? Or was it his dad? It's his, his dad. Uncle? It's his dad. So those are the he's at a you? bank. It's kind of a depressing movie, right? You had that Miss Deagle. Why don't you tell the people about Gremlins? Gremlins. Oh, just real quick, yeah, come on. I don't Speaking remember out. I mean I, I was really young when I saw Gremlins and I, I loved it. I did. Did you really? Anymore. I love the cover yeah. with the little gremlin in the box. Well, no, I did. We we didn't buy a lot of gremlin movies. We had our VCR and we recorded. Wonderful everything. beginning. I love the when he goes to the store and gets the Mogwai. And there's that mysterious, you know, that you know, he gives him the three rules, and obviously they get broken, and the Mogwai becomes. What are they? Gremlins turned out to be a very different movie yeah. when uh, Phoebe Cates and Zach Galligan <laughs> first saw that movie for the first time. Yeah, they mm. sorry. They, shut up. No, they uh, it was a very different movie from what they expected because I think they were shooting. They thought it was going to be like mostly a horror movie. And it hmm. came out being it's it's hard to call it a horror movie. It's it is got what horror is elements. Gremlins? Yeah, it's yeah. really hard to classify. Well, some of my because the Gremlins films. are really scary, but then they've got that lovable yeah. part where they're watching right. Disney movies. I mean, it's so some weird. of my favorite films are the ones that just combine genres. You know, I love that. Yeah, shit. it just feels such a like a. I wouldn't say Gremlins is depressing, but but, but one of my favorite not dark. human characters yeah. of all time is Gizmo. I fucking love Gizmo. Oh, Gizmo, yeah, such a great design and the Gremlins. It's too bad he turned into a Gremlin. And Gremlins Three, yeah, the right, Lenny yeah. Sherman. No, what'd you call it? You called it, didn't you? <laughs> Gremlins. Sorry. Behind the scenes. <laughs> anyways. Gremlins three, the next batch. <laughs> you fuckers. Anyways, okay, yeah. So anyways, he yeah, and there's a you know, he works at a bank and he's trying to hold up his whole family and there's that one Judge Reynolds guy, whatever his name is. Judge Reynolds. Peltzer, this isn't a pet store. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Anyways, yeah, so we get yeah, Corey Feldman in one of his youngest roles, you know. Was that before Stand By Me? Yeah, wasn't that? I what think so. Year? What year yeah. was Gremlins? Eighty four? Eighty four. Yeah. So, anyways, you know, what do you like? I like a lot such, of I would so many love great stand up scenes. kid what? back then. Corey, oh, Corey Feldman, Feldman? He, yeah. did, he did Friday the 13th. Yeah. Uh, stand by me. Gremlins in the same year. And then the next year, he stand did Goonies. By me. Um, Lost Boys. You ever see Lost Boys? Yeah, I did. That was when he was older. Really? It was all right. Was, I like Lost yeah, Boys. It was all right, bit, actually. Yeah, anyways, but anyway, so yeah, he was in it. Yeah, I remember him in the Christmas tree. Anyways, the, all the rules get broken. It's kind of cool, yeah. The, the, uh, the they look great. They're just such random rules too. Right. Yeah, that's what I like about it. And what what the other thing I like, yeah. the other thing I liked about both Gremlins one and two, because I actually think Gremlins two is better for many reasons. Um, but I liked how they never gave any origin story to the Gremlins, which is something that I've tried to do. Right, the Mogwai just appears. It's yeah, just better just to not have in a story, story about it. Yeah. So a lot of standout scenes to me, anyways, in the first film. A lot of very intense scenes. I mean, yeah, you think Gremlins. You know, it's like a lighthearted movie, but it's actually pretty dark and actually quite quite scary at times. You know, the one scene to me, I, I think I like the most is the mother when uh, she finds out the pots have hatched in the attic. Right. You know, right? And just, it's so creepy, though, you know, and she puts one in the microwave. Stay out of my kitchen! Yeah, and, and she stabs puts one to one, death. Yeah, puts yeah. one in the blender. <laughs> I like the and microwave. then Stripe attacks her with a knife in the no, tree. No, not Stripe, but the... Uh, no, oh, in the yeah. tree. Stripe, that's Stripe who attacks her. No, it's not Stripe. You sure? No, no, because, yeah, it's the one in the tree that attacks her, and then um, Pelcher, Billy, comes in with the sword and knocks it off the tree. Oh, that's Into right. the fire, and then Stripe's he... like... Rrr. Yeah. That's the other great scene I like a lot, too, is when they hunt Stripe in the um, it's a gymnasium. Right, and he jumps in the pool. Yeah! Shit. yeah. That part was cool. It's a very I deceiving like movie, he goes, too, he goes, because... Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Before the thing breaks out. <laughs> Thank you. It's a very you know, dis- disturbing movie what? too. Is or, it? Not no. disturbing. Um, it's it's. Uh, oh, fuck, it is dark though. It's dark. It's no, it's dark a very center. deceitful movie because yeah. you know that you're following these evil Mogwai up until they become gremlins. You don't see that coming. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck can they turn into? They're, even the mean ones are just. Well, little there's furry some, there are some. Uh, Mrs. Deagle almost was like really terrible though. Like those poor but kids. But you got her come upon. We're hungry. Well, yeah. now you know what the Santa for. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so sad. Like, ouch. What's good about it? You know. But, uh, yeah, she did get her confidence. That's another great scene, too. I like the two cops. Obviously, the best line ever. You know, I'm the sheriff I'm the asshole. Sheriff asshole. <laughs> Watch out. He might bite you. <laughs> He's all fucked up. What the hell's going on? He, like, turns over and starts shaking. <laughs> How did Miss Diggle die? Don't they come by, like, carolers and stuff? I forgot about that. She, uh, no, she, she's really... on the she's on the chair, and the the gremlin comes comes right. by and like fucks with her chair, and then she's like she tries to go upstairs, and it goes in like ninety miles per hour, and she shoots out of her roof. It also has the great uh, what's his name? What was his what was the neighbor's name? The great the what's guy. his name? No, you know, W W I I. Mr. Futterman. Hey, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah anyways, the drunk guy loses his. That job. actor, he's in a lot of movies. He is in a lot of movies. Remember, he was in the Howling. Terminator? Terminator. Terminator. He was in the Howling. You can't do that here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only yeah. what you see, pal. Does he die? It's so weird because you think they're dead. They come back in part two, but in right. the movie, 
Uh, yeah, you think they, they, they die, yeah. The tractor or whatever, and it looks like they run them over. There's like, boom, and you think right. they killed them. And it killed them! Anyways. And, you know, it is such a dark movie, yeah. Cause, and then there's also that really long speech by Phoebe Cates. You know what's so funny, though? I could watch Gremlins all day as a kid. Really? Huh. But the ending of theme song used to scare the fuck out what's of me. What's that? Oh. It's the very last yeah. line. When the old man's walk, it's that last shot. The Maybe old it's a gremlin. <laughs> right. The old man's walking away. Yeah. And I used to watch that movie at, d- at night in the dark, too. This was scary oh, shit. Oh, yeah. And they'd be like, So if your air conditioner goes on the fritz, or your washing machine blows up, or your video recorder conks out, before you call the repairman, turn on all the lights, check all the closets and cupboards, look under all the beds, because you never can tell. There just might be a gremlin in your house. Oh, that used to freak well, and just the, the whole fuck movie, out of me. The whole movie will scare you about those gremlins, you know. Yeah. There were some good scares. I remember, I think it was when um, the, the, he kills a scientist, right? The, 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 the teacher right. stabs him in the ass. And then it jumps out of the... I forgot what it was. Oh, it was in like a medicine cabinet. That right. was a good scare. That was like the reveal, pretty much. I have a good memory, though. I, I, I have a good memory of it. I was watching it with Carter. We watched like, the first half hour, right? And I go downstairs. I'm like, okay. He comes downstairs like a half hour later. Uncle Matty, it's getting scary. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so it bad. Can, it can get that it way. It is very scary. Yeah. And it's also graphic. And uh, Spike Spike had a terrible death. That was very graphic. I remember that one. Remember that when He's on the fountain or whatever, trying to yeah. multiply again. And they, they fry him with the sunlight. And just you see a skeleton. And you yep. see the, you know, but um, obviously the great scene too. They're in the theater, right? They go to the yeah, theater. it's a very fast-paced movie too, and it's what like it goes oh, from yeah. like calm to like fucking hectic yeah. in I, no time at all. I love it's, the balancing. Yeah. Act. I love all the the inventions his dad tries to make that always keep fucking up. The yeah. orange juice slicer, what do you call it? The Peltzer slicer or something like that. <laughs> They're always going haywire. I like yeah. the bathroom buddy. What's that? That'd be sweet. Oh, the bathroom buddy. They might have a little look with the bathroom buddy. <laughs> oh, I gotta work on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I like the orange slice that just shoots it all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, yeah. What do they do? They 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 uh, they burn the theater down, kill it all explodes. the explodes. Yeah. They, thank yeah. you. They explode it. I love the last like twenty minutes of that film too when they hunt Spike in the. Um... It's Stripe, dude. Huh? Stripe. Oh, Spike's in the second one. I'm sorry if you're listening, Spike. In the hello. second one, his name is. <laughs> anyway, Stripe. Not, it's not Spike. It's Mohawk. Look I it like up. Spike a lot better. Really? It's Mohawk is his he, name. Yeah, There's Mohawk, Lenny, Daffy, and I can't think of the, the fourth one. There's oh, yeah, Lenny, Gremlins Daffy. Too. Yeah, they had better personalities. I mean, yeah. you look at the first movie, the Gremlins kind of looked a little different, but they were all kind of the same. I guess that was kind of the idea. Yeah. But I also like the cultural references in the theater. They're all, you know, there's all kinds of little things they do that, you know, the Gremlins I did like the fun. look of the Gremlins better in the second one, though. Yeah, no, they, they did, yeah. And a yeah. lot of things better, but obviously, yeah, the ending too. The ending, last line of Gremlins, you get to every time, and yeah, I think yeah, it's such such a peculiar movie because it's like you know you think it's like, it has a light heart, but it's it is really dark. There's so much I love the soundtrack of that movie though. I really yeah. do. The score is really and good. Then there's that weird Phoebe, Phoebe Kate speech. Doesn't she just talk yeah. about her dad? And it just goes on and on. She's just like, yep, that's how I found out there was no Santa Claus. Yeah, <laughs> and then they just go on to the next scene. It's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> It's a, a very dark movie. I used to love when he kissed her. I used to rewind it and jerk off to it. That's nice. I just envisioned myself. I used to watch porn and jerk I off to it. I wanted to be Billy. Yeah. I wanted to you know, be Zach Billy. You know, Zach Galligan sounds like well, a really cool guy in person, oh, Of course, though. yeah. I'm sure I'd he love is. to meet him, yeah. That's weird. You'd think he'd be in some other movies, but, you know, not really. He he was. They're just not, they didn't take Anything off else like Gremlins. Gremlins. Oh, I like what Gremlins do is like the, uh, yeah, I like the pod effects, you know, when they. I was at the FYE attic. the other day, yeah. a few weeks ago, and they had. A really big uh, spider gremlin figurine. Wow. I want that for Christmas this year. It was awesome. All right. Go with my gremlin I'll get, doll. I'll get saving money. Yeah. I, but uh, I love Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2, when I first saw the trailer for that movie, I begged my parents to take me, and they right. didn't. Because when I was a kid, I was at that age, and I'd watch every movie 50 times. They were fucking <laughs> sick of Gremlins. So they wouldn't take me to Gremlins 2. So saw Gremlins 50 times. Yeah, I love that movie. Well, good. I'm glad I got scared to scared the shit out, out of me. And, you know. But uh, Gremlins 2, I didn't see till it came out to HBO. And I remember I watched it, and I was I loved it. I thought it was fan-fucking-tastic. And to this still day, still I still do. I love that movie. That's one of my and top I can't five explain why. Secrets. It's you, You've got to be in the right mind to watch that movie. And it gets a lot of unfair... Uh, reviews. A lot of people think it's it's a much worse no, movie. I don't yeah, know. I thought, a lot of I people do. Two actually gets a lot of good reviews. It's in my top five sequels. So fuck everybody else. Well, hey, 
What I I'm say goes, saying, Lenny. <laughs> I'm just saying what everyone else says. I'm not saying Fuck it's that. what no, I No, I thought Gremlins 2 actually did get a positive reaction. But, uh, I no, I love Gremlins 2 a lot. I, the only thing I, I didn't mean, like, well, the only thing I missed was definitely the dark tone. I didn't, it wasn't a scary. Well, like I said, it's but, like, the it, you know. it opens with the fucking Bugs Bunny cartoon. Right, I know. Right? I just, so I that, like my horror. That right there sets the tone I like my for, horror, yeah. It's hard to pick Gremlins between 2. the two. I, I, I definitely think Gremlins 2 is a great sequel. It's a fantastic sequel. They, they I go, mean, there's nothing, there's nothing else you could really do with the sequel, though. I mean, that's what Joe Dante was trying to do. Yeah, he didn't want know, to do that movie, did he? He was like, "Fuck that." Well, he, he wanted to do it his way, him. and the only way he could really do it was to lampoon the first one a little well, bit. Well, he had total creative control of that film, from what I, I read about Gremlins too. And yeah, that was the only was, that was his only stipulation. I'll only do it if you give me all the control to do yeah. it. I'll do if you let me do whatever I want, then we'll do it. You know, I like how he had a, a love interest, not love interest, but she was flirting with him. She grabs his like dick in the restaurant or something like that. Oh. What was that? That red haired no, she she he wasn't uh, too bad looking. Foot gives him a little foot padding yeah. oh, underneath forces. the table. Yeah. <laughs> I love Phoebe. A Case. little two for one. I think sale, she's you so know. cute. Oh my god. I liked her better oh. in the first one though, honestly. Oh, the long hair. Yeah. yeah, she was a very very beautiful girl. She had a really weird. You know, they had her in that outfit the whole movie with the right. tall hat. Nice yeah. hat. You know. <laughs> Marlo Bloodstone. That was his boss's name. Yeah, yeah. It is weird how they bring back those old... What's his name? Ah, Mr. Futterman, yeah. Yeah. Because he's you do... When you watch the first movie, it looks like they die. They well, they do that over. in Jurassic Park, too. Oh, well, no, he survives in Jurassic Park. But you get the idea. Like, a lot of the times no. you think a character dies, yeah. and they come back later. I mean, All right. Hey, no big deal. I like hey, that Billy, character. Billy, I made it. <laughs> That's just like really cool, oh, though, In is... Gremlins, I do like the scene in the bar, too, like when they're all fucking drinking and stuff. Oh, yeah. She tries to take the picture, and he right. flashes her. And... <laughs> There's just so many good scenes in that first movie. I mean, I, I, yeah. We've been talking about it for 12 minutes. I can still think of other scenes that well, are Well, the great. first one's a good suspense piece. I like no doubt about when, it. Remember when Gizmo's watching the things on TV? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. You He's know. watching It's a Wonderful Life. It's for the little yeah. kids. Oh, does he? Oh, oh I yeah. thought it was like some Cary Grant. Like, I don't know. Uh, it might have been. Yeah. The, the mother's watching Oh, it's a yeah. What day? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's such it was a so sad weird. movie. The first time I saw It's a Wonderful Life, I huh? remember watching oh. that one scene from Gremlins and be like, oh, that's where that's from. And she's like, oh, such a sad movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of funny that, you know, that, that you, you watch Gremlins, you only get Mrs. Deagle a, called today. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your I mean, dog's a dick. He's got to go. Yeah, the poor dog. Yeah, they're going to replace the dog as the family pet. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Love it, man. I just, yeah. I think the kitchen massacre. Stand- What's your favorite part in Gremlins? Do you have a favorite scene? I don't know. Not really. Probably the kitchen to me. The kitchen massacre um, with the mother. That was pretty cool stuff. I mean, the image that always stands out to me is Do like you, you said. Hear when, what I hear? Yeah, when, <laughs> when Stripe gets killed in the end. Oh, okay. um, I mean, a lot of stuff. And little little things. Little yeah. things. The first, yeah. When he I like when he goes on the TV. He's Billy. Yeah, that's freaky. <laughs> and then the chainsaw. He had like a fucking chainsaw. Yeah, like a it's fucking a freaky bow movie. Gun. It is a freaky yeah, yeah, dark. Yeah, like you said, dark movie. You know, like so many dark undertones. Can movies. we make All a movie right. about us dissolving? That'd be kind of funny. Yeah. We had like a falling out. Hi, guys. This is Lenny Sherman by myself. Matt's a dick. <laughs> I, w- I want to storm out of a podcast sometime. We should get like in some heated argument. Like, fuck like, you, fuck Lenny! You shit, Lenny. You hear me walking out my back. I'm fucking an asshole. And Lenny's like, fuck you too. Anyways. <laughs> so what else we got, man? I- I'm glad we got to talk about Gremlins. I mean, I was just thinking of random movies. That- that's Gremlins. a favorite of mine, man. I'm glad we got to talk it about it. It is a that. random movie. Why well, Gremlins? you know, we've talked about Gremlins too a lot, but I just never thought we'd talk about Gremlins too much. Because I've mentioned it in my five favorite sequels and all that, but you know. One movie we haven't talked that, about. Uh, make that sure much. I know it. Say it quickly. Is, we've talked about it Trying outside of the podcast, <laughs> but I would Trying like Jedi. your thoughts on Ghostbusters 2. Really? Yeah. Ghostbusters 2? 2. Not the first one, because we, we saw that in theaters. We know how you feel about it. I love it. Yeah, well, everyone loves Ghostbusters. But uh, what, my, what I'm curious about is why mm-hmm. is that even James Rolf did a video. Why what? is that such an underrated sequel? Is it underrated or is it overrated? It's underrated. I think it's overrated. Really? <laughs> It already gets a right. lot of really? shit. Really? It already really? gets a lot of shit, though. Uh, I thought we already reviewed Ghostbusters too, didn't we? Did we? I think we've right, talked well, about it quite then. a bit. Uh, jo- I wait the word of Vigo. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have discussed it. Oh, it's okay. I, I'd you know. agree it's probably not as funny, but it's definitely got no, as many memorable dialogue. Funny. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess. He is Vigo! You are a bunch of flies to him. Sorry, the Statue of Liberty thing was fucking stupid. That was just... Why? Why is that it's stupid? Just, it's ridiculous. It's the Not same stupid, thing as. But ridiculous. It's the same thing as the Marshmallow Man in the first movie. That's Gozer. That's like a power. But how can Ghostbusters revive? Well, not revive. The slime. The slime did it. I know. The slime did it. The good vibe. Why do you need a reason for everything? It's Does just everything silly. Need to be, yeah. Hey, you look at back. Mom is silly, on, but she still exists. It's a little ridiculous. I love the Stay Pushed Marshmallow Man. That was awesome. That's a defining moment oh. in cinema. 
I don't know about using a Nintendo controller and stuff. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's an okay sequel. I mean, it's I, I don't I think it could have been better though. That's all. I just I felt you know maybe you, you know just what? don't feel like they they wanted to be in it though. You watch the actors; they just they didn't look like they really wanted to do it. And I don't think they did. I think they all wanted Ghostbusters to just be one movie, never done. A yeah. sequel was the last thing on their minds. And you do you kind of do see a little well, bit of reluctance in that movie. I mean, from everybody. Did you ever see Blues like Brothers? Uh, no. Well, it's it's Is it good? A, "Quote unquote comedy classic." I didn't really care for it. That's just yeah, my opinion. But I'm just saying. <laughs> I just saw a review, right. a very long review for Blues Brothers 2000. <clears throat> oh yeah, with John Goodman. Oh, yes, no. it's on. It's it's on a lot of lists of, uh, of like worst sequels ever. It's yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. And yeah. Dan Aykroyd was like the mastermind behind it. Sure. Well, yeah. So yeah. given that, I don't think I really want to see his version of Ghostbusters three. Yeah, me, me neither. I mean, well, I he was know. the mastermind behind Blues Brothers, though. So I mean that was that was a hit. Yes, yeah. but and it's kind of a cult classic these days. It has the brothers, great John I Belushi. think, yeah, those two were yeah. good together. But you do a Ghostbusters without Peter Venkman and without Egon. I don't. I what don't do you know. think of Alien? You like Alien? I watched yeah, it on like, Blu-ray recently. I actually really liked it. A yeah, lot. I like I've Alien. seen it before, but like I didn't like it so much as a kid. Watching is, it now, though. Here's some trivia. Here's some trivia. Uh, like, Alien Three was the first uh, R-rated movie I saw in theaters. Oh, there you go. That's cool, and cool I didn't like it when I saw it as a kid. Um, it's grown on me. That's the one that yeah. gets a lot of shit in the series of Alien movies. Um, but I didn't like the first Alien as a kid either. And then Ridley as I got Scott, older, right? Ridley Scott. Yeah. One, uh, one of my favorite directors now. I think. I mean, living, oh, yeah? anyways. Yeah, I mean, I definitely. You think I? I mean, I'm a big Blade Runner fan and right. Alien, and then obviously uh, the it's oh god, Gladiator. I mean, you know, he's made some other ones that are supposed to be really good. Black Hawk Down, I haven't seen yet, but yeah. I really liked Alien. I thought it was really suspenseful. I, well, one thing if I'm I really not mistaken, I think he did Hannibal. Yeah, he did. Yep, yep. What I loved about Alien though was like the production production design, like just watching the spaceship and like the it's inside. It's Jaws in space. That's yeah, what and it, it just it, it was people. You felt like it was real people. They're always bitching about the money they can't make, and yep. you know, and it's just you know my favorite scene was probably Dallas though in the air ducts. You know, Dallas, no, yeah, he's right there. I, I think with with Alien, behind you. Alien to me, it's it's a good science fiction film. Thank it's, you. Yeah, that's what I was. It's thinking. a good yeah. like I like the visuals. You I like really how like you're in outer space. Gets, but Alien never really scared me. Yeah, it's, yeah well. It you know, never really. I mean, I love the design of the xenomorph and everything. Has I just, it been a while since you've seen it, or no? Uh, well, I saw it like, like it? last year, I think. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Because yeah, I have, I own the blue. I love set. the set designs. Yeah, I mean, I love. Yeah, when they come it's a good looking alien. film. It's a very it ambitious alien, film. The dead, the dead alien pilot. Yeah, that but, stuff um, was cool. It, it just for some reason it never scared me. I don't know if it's. I like the scene when they poke it and the acid comes out and it starts going yeah. through the floor. Well, that's the other thing I like about it too. Was yeah, the the alien in the movie actually evolves. It changes. Right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You don't know what it's gonna look like. And then there's those uh, the scary. Oh my god! I did freak me out when she goes. But away. I will say when it when it moves, yeah. it's kind of lame when it moves. There's. Well, yeah. I mean, but it's not a scary movie. Looks great though. Yeah, it looks it looks really good. I think I it's like kind it, of man. intense. Yeah, I just I don't know. You feel like yeah, in space, no one can hear you scream. Yeah. You're right. I mean, it's not that scary, but obviously the the, the the chest popping scene. Right. And I thought the ending was really good. And the though. thing with Alien Two, I I found the first movie, oh, oh, the aliens? second one too. No, or is it Alien Al- Two. Well, Aliens and the first movie yeah. both have kind of uneven pacing. Like the first one is it's slow and it's building up a mood. Then it You're picks. Right. It then it picks up. up. Then it dies down again. And then you kind of lose the suspense I don't a little bit. Dying down, but yeah. I, I do because it takes a while for them to. Because after once after, things get going, it after it going. pops out of the chest, yeah. it runs away. Well, then they have to look for the alien now. The only thing I didn't so like about Alien though was that fucking cat. I mean, what the fuck was up with that? She actually literally ran all around the spaceship for it, looking for the fucking cat. Jinxy, Jinxy, where are you? It was kind of like with aliens too. I fucking hate that little girl. What was her name? Dot. <laughs> Newt. How can you hate the Newt! little girl? You should give Aliens another no. try. Seriously. No, I'll watch Aliens again. No, I know. I just, I don't know. I appreciate the thrills of Alien, though. I, I'm not thrills, but, like, just the suspense. Well, Aliens is memorable for the characters. Aliens was, to me, like an all-out action film. And that's fine. I, that's cool. And it was pretty suspenseful at parts. But Alien yeah. just felt much more claustrophobic. Well, I like the Alien, the you know? look of Aliens, too, well, a lot. Well, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, the Aliens definitely looked a lot better, too. It just... I, I don't know if I would say Aliens is a better movie overall, though. I, no, I just know. yeah, I just I love the atmosphere of Alien. I just I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I watched it again. And Scorney Weaver wasn't exactly like the big heroine that she turned out to be. Yeah, she was still a very strong character. She took charge, you know. Once um, 
I liked I, Sigourney died. Weaver was the one thing I liked better in Aliens. Yeah. I thought. Well, once she Dallas actual, died, she had to take over the ship. I love the aspect in Aliens where she yeah. finds out that her she never you know she was in space for fifty six years or whatever, right? And she lost her daughter in that yeah, time. That stuff, I, I thought yeah. that was pretty emotional. Oh yeah, no Aliens. Yeah, as regards. Did you ever see movie. any of the other ones? Yeah, you know what? I don't. I don't want to. Really? I think I'd rather watch Alien again. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really what I really I liked know. about the whole franchise, not not Alien vs. Predator, fuck those, but um, the yeah. first, the, the original four Alien movies, yeah. um, each one was directed by a different director. Sure, yeah. And they all have a distinguished look. They all took the franchise a different direction. Like David Fincher took it in a totally oh, David different Fincher. direction. Yeah, he directed Alien You like 3. David Fincher? You know his movies or no? No, just that one. He's actually a really well-acclaimed director. Oh, I know. I think. But Alien 3 <laughs> has a history. Seven? Like, How many you've seen Seven? Oh, yeah. I okay, that was David Fincher. That was a while ago. That was all right. What's but, in the um, box? All right, anyways, you were saying. Yeah. Well, I always got with from Aliens is like her hatred of the aliens, dude. She hates yeah. the aliens. Well, Alien 3 is, is pretty iconic. It, it to some, I mean, I really like Alien 3 for what it is, but it's got a really iconic ending. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you know the story. I would I would recommend Alien 3. Nah, I might check it out. They got the whole Blu-ray set at the library. Might check I it got out. it on Blu-ray. Oh, Next well, time you you're go. over, we'll watch Alien oh, 3. Oh, let's not overdo it, but yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, I don't know. We'll see. You you need to watch that, and then you know what? Resurrection was. I do anything, you know. Re- I saw Resurrection in theaters too, and I liked it better then than I do now. Resurrection is probably my least favorite, but that's got a very aliens. It's very that, action. That packed. ending in Alien was pretty freaky though. When you think she's getting away, she gets in the pod, right. and all of a sudden, like, <clears throat> it's with just her. comes yeah. out of nowhere. And it's but like hiding nothing, Ooh. nothing will ever beat yeah. the Queen in Aliens. Yeah, no, that yeah, the one queen of was the cool. mo- one of the most badass yeah. movie Fully villains. Agree. In Fully movie agree. history Fully was the, the, queen. the Queen. Such a great build-up. Yeah. yeah. Right, we got eight minutes left, so we're going to have to keep going. We have eight minutes. What else we got? Huh? Well, I'm glad we got, we, got, we got a lot of shit out of the way here, man. Air it all out, you know? Fuck. Um, eight minutes. So I'd I mean, really like to talk about to like your quick. ten best video games. I got like ten movies. Do <laughs> I don't have ten video games. Really? I'm that's, trying to get my definitive ten movies. That's a disappointment to me, you bitch. I know. I'm trying to get ten movies together. I'm getting there. I'm taking. I'm taking some out and putting some in. Singing in the rain's actually getting up there. I don't know. That's a good one. It's a like mu- Well, what I like about it too is it's a movie about making movies. <laughs> that's what's so cool. You know, dealing yeah. with sound and it is. It's a movie about making movies, and it's like you know, and that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, they say today that never make a movie about making I mean, a movie because no one cares. But think but about what a difference that was to have sound in movies. You know, that yeah. transition oh, yeah. and just the struggle. No, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's just such a nice, fun movie and great songs. And yeah. It's just, if you don't like that movie, you get a heart of coal. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you can't live. A heart of coal. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's getting up there. I don't know. I'd replace Vertigo with Psycho because I'm in obsessed with Vertigo right now, unfortunately. I, I just why. love whenever a movie takes Citizen Kane off its list. Uh, hey. I just love that. Well, it's, it's just, yeah. To me, it's the best movie about love ever made. I was just obsession and love. Them? Yeah, and just losing love and it finding was all it right. again. I mean, I've got to see it again, yeah, it's I guess. Lot, you know, losing the love that, and then finding out she was a fake and just like, it was interesting because they're, they're both playing parts. Like, she's never who she is. It can be a very is. relatable thing. At, yeah. A really she's relatable movie. She's trying to be movie. Madeline and then she's trying to be Judy and then she, yeah. he molds her into what he wants her to be and then when he finally sees I think her, with Vertigo, and then I to, like the kind of, you know, that, Vertigo is one of those movies where you don't like anybody in the movie. Well, Everybody Everybody is just, I don't know. They're slaves. They're slaves to someone that's not even in the room. That Gavin Elster guy, you know, designed everything. But here they are, just the two of them, fighting yeah. through their feelings over something that someone else created. And when he finds out that she was. Well, afraid, there you go. You're looking at it. It's well, more than it's, it's more than skin deep. deep. It's oh, yeah. it's it's terribly deep. And I just I was feeling it like, you know, did he tell you what to do, what to say? Did he make you up? And he was just telling her like it was stabs into his heart, you know. Right. It jumped into the bay, didn't you? He was just finding it all out. And it just Wow. And then to yeah. lose her again at the end of the film, she falls well, off. Well, that's really cool that you can like so easily. Well, it is, and I, I love San Francisco. I love the look of the film too. Oh, it's just, oh, San See, Francisco. I love I like movies that are cool. placed in Japan. Well, that love, too. Yeah, that's why I started getting into Godzilla. But, is I love any movie which, take, takes place. But you've in got Japan. that great Golden Gate Bridge, you know. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, off. it's very iconic. I just, oh, and I love Jimmy Stewart, and that's probably his best. I, what a tortured. You know, they were saying you know he's the all American guy. Can you imagine like someone like Tom Hanks playing a role like that? Someone obsessed like that. It would be scary to see someone like Tom Hanks in a dark, dark Yeah, but, role. but Tom Hanks has a range. He could do I'm it. I'm just saying, though, it was like know? it was playing against type. I think yeah. Hitchcock used that again, you know, for him to like. Yeah. Everyone knew him as this nice guy next door. To see him as a tortured, obsessed detective, it was just unsettling back then. And yeah. I just, yeah, I absolutely loved it. So, you know, that's going to probably edges out Psycho to me because it's just more emotional. 
you know, just I don't, I don't know. There's something about it. I'm really glad that I, I have it and I own it. Well, that's good. Anytime I watch it, I can enjoy it. And it's, yeah, I, yeah, it is deep. Anytime I watch it, it's a deeper. Anyways, uh, do we even share any top ten movies? What are your top ten movies? You even have them? Forrest Gump and uh, um, Shawshank. Let's see. Gotta watch Rocky Shawshank Balboa, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Wa- that's not top ten, is it? Yep. Back to the Future Part Two. Um, Return of the King and Return of the Jedi. Well, you're going to edit it, aren't you? I thought you were going to change it. I don't know if I'm you going to. You said you were going to go through it and kind of think about it a little bit more. I might. I don't know. but You're right, though. You can, it can change any time. You're right. Yeah. I mean, the top, the 25 list, it's a good video to watch, I mm-hmm. think. You know, because I can defend. I fully agree. I can defend any movie on that list, why it's my personal top 25. I mean, I don't go for, you know, what everyone else thinks. But um, Oh, there is no what everyone else but, thinks. But, I mean, yeah. I mean. There like, is no common consensus. If I were to of, go back and change it, like Schindler's yeah. List might actually be a lot higher on the list. Oh, that, have you ever seen it? Has it just been the one time? Schindler? No, I've seen it like four times. Four really? Times. Yeah, I own it on film. Blu-ray. Phenomenal yeah. film. I love Phenomenal. that movie. I mean, I it's can't just when I put it, is his best Here's movie the thing. <laughs> Both Pulp one. Fiction and Schindler's List are on that list, and when I made that video, I had just seen those movies for the first I know, time right? that year. So that's how much of an impression Pulp Fiction's like one of the coolest movies ever. It's made. a really cool you know, it's movie. It's not even like it's but good, I might but actually, it's, like it's cool. Yeah, it's but just... I might actually take Pulp Fiction off the list only because I haven't seen it in a while. It's been a while, oh, and there's been fair, other movies. Yeah. It is a, it's my favorite Tarantino movie by far. Oh, yeah, by far. It's but, what he's uh, known for. It is just cool. Well, we got to watch it sometime. It's just, oh, my God. It's it is a so cool movie. Cool. Yeah. Like, the style. And it just, I thought it was so influential, too. It's the way yeah. it told its story. The way it jumped around. It was I like, actually like the fact that I have a Trumbo movie on that list, though. Right? Yeah. Because, well, the one, yeah, the one they did. Because Toxic Avenger, I think, is genuinely a good movie. Yeah. It's a cult classic. I mean, it has a following, a huge following now. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people like that movie. I guess uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to yeah. be in the remake, and he saw the original <laughs> and turned it down. I, double double onions. <laughs> Wapa double onions. I remember when you said that. It was awesome. I saw Predator. Wapa double onions. Stick onions. around. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though. Stick around. Anyways, I'm going to probably watch a movie out here. I'm going to watch a Woody Allen movie or something. I'm There's a new one that, that just came Fuck out him. that I was watching recently with Woody Allen. It was a Woody, Woody Allen film. You, get, you should at least watch. The, you should at least look up the screenplay for Annie Hall. I know you didn't think much of Annie Hall, oh, but the screenplay. Sake. That's good. No, me. no, but it's like highly rated. I don't sit here and read screenplays. Why not? You look, you're a screenwriter. I know, but it's inspiring I, in a way. I watch movies. I don't read them. Oh, come on. It's just the same. You read, you watch, you read the screenplay. And tell me I what think you reading think. the screenplays is great. That's good. Good for it can you. be. It's the basis of the whole fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Don't have much to comment on that. Uh, it was kind of interesting because they were interviewing, like, well, I've just been really into Hitchcock, and they were saying, how do you work? And he was like, well, as soon as I write the script, the movie's done. I'd rather not even shoot it. <laughs> you know, it's like he doesn't even need to look at the camera. He knows right where it's going to be. You know, just like you're conducting an orchestra, you don't even need to look at the score. You know, it's like. Yeah, that was kind of a cool way to put it. You know, I don't know. You kind of need people to shoot a movie. No, I know as you I'm, do. I'm as I'm saying, trying to figure out now by shooting this stupid right. short film. No, I'm just saying when you have like a highly visual mind, when you're writing the script and the screenplay, it's like it's already yeah. there in the pages. You don't even know. You just have but to a shoot script it. is never definite either. Right. The script is always changing. Definitely, always, even on the set. You got actors. That's what's kind of cool about Jaws. Yes. I heard they were, they were writing the script as they were shooting it. <laughs> you have to sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> they were you have to. I mean, come even, up with it. even when you have a big budget. Yeah. All right. Granted, Star Wars might be the exception, but even when you have a big budget, there are limitations. Yeah. There are things that you can't have access to for simple reasons. Um, so yeah, you have to change the script to fit your budget. Yeah. You know, they Star say, Wars is a good. They say uh, shoot. You know, shoot for the sh- aim for the star, shoot for the moon. Yeah. And that there just you means like you know that. when you write a script, write it as much as, as big as you want, and then when you put the budget together, you'll. We gotta watch it in there sometime. Yeah. No, we have to. I have to. I I've been wanting to see it. And I'm gonna cry like a bitch. I cry every time that scene comes on. If you watch that whole movie and see that scene when he breaks down, Niagara Falls. <laughs> what yeah. a great film score, too, man. I love John Williams. Anyways, oh, yeah. we're about to wrap this up. We got 40 seconds, so or 50 seconds. I want to make this exactly an hour long. You seem to be getting tired, too. So I'm getting there. I'm going to help you out by a punch in the face. Anyways, this is Schmuck Cash. We were able to talk about everything we wanted. I love you. We got 30 seconds. You know what we didn't talk about? God damn it. It's too late, man. You know what? It's too late. It's not. Get it out in 20 seconds. I want this to be an hour The Turtles trailer. We didn't fucking talk about the Turtles trailer. I'm not. We're done. No, fuck you. You can do like a vlog on it. (laughs) You already talked about it. You're You're an asshole. talk about it? I thought we were going to talk about it during the podcast. I don't want to talk about it. You're an asshole. That was a repressment. I am an asshole. You're a fucking dick. That's more material for next time, folks. More Next material. time when we're you, gonna talk about when you don't come over because you're Oops, getting eternal bed rest for fuck getting you, AIDS Lenny. up your ass. Fuck you. This is it right Shithead. Fuck this bullshit. I'm, I'm leaving. Fuck you and your mother. 
Good night. Hey, good moon. <laughs>